we all have a story to tell. A gem of wisdom, a little tale, or just something to make you laugh. Do you want to hear some? Then welcome to Anecdotes. Today on Anecdotes, we travel to Baton Rouge to interview actress Ashton Lee. I'm so glad that you're here to talk with us. And um, I wanted to know about auditions, because that's a big important part in an actor's life. And how do you prepare for auditions? Um, I prepare for auditions um, really first by getting the script, um, reading it over for the first time, just, just reading it like any other book, you know, just reading it to get the material down. And then what I do is I start to break it down and I, um, you know, I, I find the scene objective, what my main objective is, um, you know, where the beats and actions are, um, my moment before is, you know, just some real work, you know, mm -hmm. on the script. Um, and then I try to develop a character from the information that's given. Um, I never try to... Um, memorize it all or uh, like I was saying before like I just don't like having a cadence you know saying something over and over and over you don't realize it but you actually start saying it you know in the way that you've rehearsed it and um, it doesn't sound natural that way once you get into the auditioning room and um, auditioning is a completely different um, it's a completely different game than actually performing it's a craft all on, all on its own and you really have to um, <laughs> learn how to audition, you know, properly. But um, once you do all the character work, um, I think the most important part is once you've entered the auditioning room to completely let it go. Take whatever, you know, the universe has given you that day, um, you know, whether it's a car accident right before or, you know, you found out somebody has just gotten engaged. Use whatever um, the universe has given you to apply it to, you know, your character. I think that's the most organic way to go about it. I think being organic is the most important, you know, um, part of it. And it's about being natural. It's about making interesting choices. It's about um, setting yourself apart, doing something that stands out, um, not being one like everyone else, you know, just reading the lines. It's about putting a little bit of your own personality into it and um, really letting it go. As the, the second you walk in, you just let it go um, because what sells you is your personality and your confidence. And um, the camera sees it like that. Well, when you're in an audition, do you, do you get nervous? Or is there a way that you sort of calm yourself or prepare yourself for, <laughs> oh <God. laughs> for the audition? Um, okay, for everybody out there that is just starting to audition or, um, you know, even if it's been a year or so, like, this is something that really takes... A lot of time to get comfortable with. Um, for me, you know, I've been doing this for about four and a half years now um, since I graduated college. Um, and I'd say the first two years, I got the worst nervous feeling before going into an audition. I'm talking like <laughs> stinking the place up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I would just, I would literally crap like five <laughs> times <laughs> per audition like I'm like how is this stuff even in my body right now but it would just work me up so much my anxiety would get the best of me like I would feel like cool as a cat walking in and then I'd sit down and be like <gasps> I'd be breathing completely what, what gets me is I'd be breathing completely normal but my heart is like thumping mm -hmm. out of my chest um and it takes a little while for that to go away, but um, rest assured, it does go away <laughs> with practice. Um, but yeah, that's what I what oh. I struggled with, um, probably about two years, um, really just, and, and even now, like every now and again, I'll get a little bit of anxiety, not like it was, but now I use it um, for my character. I use it to, you know, build up the adrenaline what, for whatever scene it is, you know what I right. mean? Um, so now I use it. It's just about um, learning how to work with what the universe is giving you. Well, you know, actors, we always put so much pressure on ourselves. Like, you have to book every audition. You know, like, you feel like, uh, what are your thoughts on that as far as auditioning? You know, I like to think every, 
everything that I auditioned for is for me. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've always argued with people that, you know, casting directors, let's say, um, or my, my agents, um, you know, past agents that said that I wasn't right for this character. I'm like, what are you to tell me I'm not right for it? Let me try. You know, right. that's my job. Like, I want to be able to mold. I can do that. There's so many different sides of me. You don't know every side of me. Like, I know what's in my database, in my brain, and I know what I can do. Let me try. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're in an audition, like, as far as wanting to book everything uh, or, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, I want to book everything. I mean, I literally, like, I pray about it. I, yeah. I'm an avid prayer about it. I, um, you know, I just ask God to give me the strength and the knowledge to go into the audition to um, to do what I need to do and to give me favor you know when the directors yeah. or the, you know the producers are going through 500 auditions and I'm I just pray that something I do stands out because you know everybody wants to book everything that they do so um, and I never lose hope like even when you know I have callback after callback and then I don't end up booking the next audition, I'm like, I'm going to book it. Like, <laughs> I've never been jaded from that thought, you know. Yeah. Like, I always have hope and I always um, think I'm going to book it and pray that I'm going to book it and hope that they see me in that role. Um, the unfortunate thing is everybody has their idea of what they want. So even if you had an outstanding audition, you hit all the points the way that you needed to, um, you know, you could look like an ex-girlfriend that they didn't mm -hmm. like. And then they're like, I hate you. <laughs> right. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've been too short, um, you know, for my, for um, the for the guy that already got the role. You know, there's so many things that go into it. Um, so you can't really take it personally. And that's something else I've learned over the years is not to take it personally anymore because um, it's out of your hands. Well, you have looked a lot of roles. And um, some of them, um, in particular, that I, I, I wanted to talk about, because I saw American Horror House, and I just, I thought that was a oh, fascinating role. I, love I loved, <laughs> you know, I don't want to give too much away, but, um, but you know, your character uh, meets some violence, and uh, there, I, you had some special effects going on there. How well, was that? Yeah, um, How was that to shoot? I really love sci-fi and horror. I feel like that's where I'm, like, kind of creating my name. Um, but a lot of actresses throughout history have started in sci-fi and horror, so I'm not going to, like... Jamie you know, Lee Curtis? Right, right. right. Um, even Jennifer Aniston, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, a lot of people have started in these silly, crazy movies, but, you know, I think they're a lot of fun, um, especially with the special effects, like American Horror House and awesome saw blade in my face, and it was, like, <laughs> a real saw blade. Like, they went and, like, trimmed me edges so it wouldn't, like, slice me if the makeup, like, fell off some kind of way, but it was a real heavy saw blade. I, they were real tools in my face. Like, I'm like, what happened to props? I think there's guys? a screwdriver <laughs> there too, right? Yeah, screwdriver in my cheek. I'm like, what happened to props? The plastic stuff. <laughs> no, it was real. Um, and it looked awesome. It did. The, um, the makeup team that Active Entertainment has is just incredible. So, um, I don't know. It's just really fun walking around set and everybody being like, oh, oh. You know, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I love the bloody eye drops. Those are probably my favorite, even though that's like nothing but sugar. So it's like very thick. So you're like blinking <laughs> with the bloody eye drops. It's really a bizarre feeling. But um, I've, I'm really, I feel very fortunate to have had the experience to, um, to, do, to, to have the experience with effects. You know, it looked fantastic. And I watched that film with my daughter, and she's 12. Oh and God, she's probably so scared. <laughs> I was like, it's so fun, we're gonna watch it together. And then I had to spend the night with her. Like, oh, she made really? me sleep in her bed, so you, she was terrified, so, which was, you know. It's funny when that's you're, the hope that when, you're, when you're, you're looking actually for. a part of a film, and you know, we're sitting yeah. watching, you know, the, the preview of it, you know, before, before it um, came out, and you know, we're all watching it, and it's just so funny, you know, to us, because, I mean, we're a part of it, you know, but right. I'm sure the little kids, yeah. You know, scare the crap out of them. It was <laughs> creepy. Was it hard to do the scene with those special effects, like, you know, adhere to your face and everything? Um, or? Uh, yes and no. You just had to be super careful? Or? Yes, because everything was really heavy mm -hmm. on my face, and um, you couldn't really move too much. 
um, because it would like it would wobble or you know fall to the side. Then it just looks really strange <laughs> when saw <laughs> point is like, you know over over your eye. It's just be like um, slashed in your head. Um, but uh, yeah, um, no, because well, what was I saying? Um, it's difficult because of the weight, mm-hmm. um, and it's also a little difficult because, you know, you're trying not to think of all this weight on your face and, you know, trying not to move so much, but you're also trying to stay in character, and you're also trying to give the best performance, you know, you can, and, I mean, I cannot, I can really, rem- I can remember that specific, um, you know, that scene on laying down, and I'm like, ah, 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 and it's like, <laughs> the, the director's like, don't move, don't move too much, and it's just like my arm, like, quivering, but, you know, those experiences is what, is what makes the filming, uh, you know, like, it's just those memorable experiences. That's a great scene. <laughs> well, you also had, you had another great scene that I remember in Swamp, Swamp Shark, yeah. and um, you had to swim away, like, in this murky bayou or something. Tell me about that. What was that like to shoot? Okay, so I am really motivated by fear. I think everybody is motivated by something and fear is what I'm is what I'm motivated by because I don't like being scared of anything and I am definitely afraid of murky waters. <laughs> so when they told me that I had to get into this little boat <sighs> in the Henderson swamp um it took a lot of, of courage for me to to be able to do that um i feel like i got over a fear doing that even though i was getting eaten up by these little black water beetle bugs Ew. they were like flying at me and going mm-hmm. i was like oh my god this sucks but um but yeah um it was definitely a great experience um just doing my own stunts mm-hmm. uh, well okay i say that because after the fact but during you know it's like everybody wants to do their own stunts as actors um they think that you know, um, this is just something that anybody can do. I say leave it to the professionals <laughs> <laughs> because this whole like Swamp Shark situation, um, this was my first stunt. Um, pretty much what they did is like put me into a harness, literal harness, like around my waist. I'm in the water. There's a really big boat that all the main people are on. And then there's a tiny little boat to where like the stunt coordinators and those, those guys are on. So I am sitting there floating in the water. Mind you, this is take after take after take. I'm like getting tired of uh, swimming in this. Was it water. cold or was it like no, no, no. Dense, it was in the like summertime? Summer. Okay. Was, I was actually filming on my birthday, June oh. 1st, um, for Swamp Shark a couple years ago. So I remember that. It was very hot, actually. Um, the water felt nice. Um, but um, anyway, so this harness was on me and they hadn't tried it on anybody else yet. Um, and all I remember is stunt coordinator going, if you're under for seven seconds, I'm coming in. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so then they they um, pulled the, I don't know, they pulled the rope and the stuff that was attached to my harness, and it yanked me like 10 feet under. And I've been plagued with these dreams of waking up in water and, like, mm. swimming to the top and never being able to get to the top and thinking I'm going to die because, you know, I can't reach the, you know, the, the surface. That's exactly how that situation was. I'm like, I was pulled so far underneath because it was the first time they did it. I was like swimming up. I'm like, where is the surface? Oh, and then no. when I finally broke the water, I was like, yay! You know. Um, but then we did it like ten more times, and it was a much smaller pull. But um, it was definitely um, frightening. But I got over that fear. I did it, and oh. it's just something that I can check off as being done with. And there was some nudity in that scene too, uh, right? Yeah. How did you, how did you deal with that? Had you done that before? I had never done that before. Um, um, yeah, how did I get comfortable <laughs> with that? It's such like a weird subject because it's like, I don't know, I'm just not used to like being so open like that. But um, it did kind of help that sci-fi is a PG, yeah. you know, station and I knew they weren't going to show it. Um, but still like, Showing boobs in front of like, so it's just like the crew on set that you plenty people they say close set but there's still a lot of people <laughs> it's like hey guys <laughs> hey guys don't mind me I'm just boobs out no big deal um, it's definitely um, an interesting situation to be in um, 
I don't know if I love this situation just because it's like, I'm kind of, I mean, I, I'm a very secure person and, and I love myself. I really do. I'm very, very confident, but it's just, I wasn't born and raised in France, you know what I right. mean? Like, it's just not in our culture to be open, you know, with sexuality, which it should be. You know, I really do agree with the French way. I lived in France for two years and it's like, they'll show a boob any day over, you know, guns and violence mm -hmm. versus our culture. It's all guns and violence and it's like a boob, Woo! you know, <laughs> but, um, I mean, it's still something that I'm, I, I, and I did that because I don't want to be afraid of anything. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be afraid of, you know, how I feel or how, you know, my insecurities to myself. I don't want to have any insecurities. Um, but would I do it for, you know, a, a random little role again? Probably not. It would probably have to be like, I mean, if HBO was like, Ashton, we want you to do this, <laughs> I'd be like, I'm naked. <laughs> but um, other than that, um, mm -hmm. it would have to just be a really good role. I mean, I'm not against it, but if the story permitted to um, show in skin, I just feel like a lot of, a lot of films just show skin to show skin for no reason. It doesn't even make sense to show skin. It's tacky. I don't want to do anything that's tacky, you know? And that worked with the scene. I mean, it, yeah. it, it was appropriate. Yeah. I mean, it made sense. Well, you did another film that I really enjoyed called The Woodshed. Oh, and The Woodshed. Yeah. So tell yeah. me about that film. Um, oh, man, that really took a lot out of me. Um, I was the lead in The Woodshed. Um, we were filming in the middle of the summer. I mean, Louisiana summers get hot. I mean, we were sweating, sweltering hot the entire time. Um, she was a very used and abused girl, and um, it was a really dark place for me that I had to get to. Um, but I'm happy that I could, you know, give that to mm -hmm. Grace, my character, and, um, you know, just make her come alive. You know, just with my own, like I said, my own database of situational things that have happened, things that, you know, I've had to go through friends with, or just things that have affected me through my life, um, I was able to apply. Um, to to that role um, because it is very heavy content. Um, the underlying message is um, really scary. I mean, it's about sex cults. Mm -hmm. I mean, who talks about those things? I didn't even know it was. I didn't even know they were real, honest to God, until I started doing some character study on it, and, um, and then I started looking into the Children of God sex cult. And um, I mean, if you can get through all six episodes on YouTube, I commend you because it it was really difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was about developing a character, and um, even though I was in a really dark place for most of that filming, um, I think that shows in the product oh, because yeah. it's just won so many awards and it's got so much recognition. And you know, that's a graduate thesis project out of UNO, you know, woo -woo, University of New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, and y'all went to LA, right? We for went to LA was... for uh, the um, International Television Festival in LA. Um, and K.D. Amon um, won Best Director wow. for it um, out of all those films that were there. So it's just a, you know, just a testimony to, you know, Louisiana talent yeah. and um, really staying true to, you know, our people and, you know, supporting everybody. Well, you're also doing some teaching now, right? You're going to be doing some classes. Do you want to yeah. tell us about that? Um, well, I've taken classes from just about everybody. Um, I've been studying for a long time, and I feel like um, I've taken – some very valuable knowledge from each person, something that, you know, something from each that really affected me and my acting skills and just, you know, what I use on a daily basis mm -hmm. when I'm preparing for an audition or when I'm on set. Um, so I feel like I can really give back and it's it would be a good way for me to continue um, teaching myself because this is an ongoing, you know, yeah. it's an ongoing battle. Like you never know enough, like you're always learning. The second you think you know it all, you're done in this business yeah. because there's somebody that's going to work harder than you, that's going to do more than you, put more effort in than you, and then surpass you. And um, if you don't have the work hard attitude, <laughs> you're not made for this industry because right. it ain't easy. It's very difficult. It's very not glamorous. Your self-esteem gets, you know, plummeted all the time. You know, you don't get a callback for this. You don't get any explanation. Um, you know, you're constantly wondering why. I'm not good enough until <laughs> you have enough experience to realize what's really going on. Yeah. It's not nothing about you. Um, and then you start to kind of tweak 
um, the things that you can do to make yourself stand out and um, to be the one that they pick. So I'm starting classes. Um, it's going to be a beginner's intensive. Um, pretty much I'm doing um, a little package deal um, because a lot of teachers, no teacher around here does it, and I think it's really important. Like they'll give you the, the information, but they don't give you the tools to get an agent, mm -hmm. to get representation, to get to the next step. So um, what my classes are going to do is um, we're going to give you a commercial headshot, a theatrical headshot, starting the second week. It's going to be a six-week course. Starting the second week, um, we're going to um, start on a monologue, work on that um, for the next five weeks, tape that at the end um, for the showcase. And um, so you have a package to give to an agent. Here are my headshots. Here is... Um, here yeah. is my monologue, you know, everything's a growing experience and, um, you know, it's good to start with somebody, you can always, you know, grow and advance, it's, it really just depends, there's so many agents here, yeah. you know, it really just depends on your connection with them, you know, some people work well with some people and some people, you know, don't work well with others, so um, it really just depends on your relationship and um, the level that you want to get to. Well, is there um, a website or someplace where they um, can? Yes. Find your information. Um, it's called the Broken Leg Acting Studio. Um, you can okay. email me at um, what is it? The Broken Leg dot co. Um, I think it's Ashton at the Broken Leg dot co. Okay. Yeah. Not com co. <laughs> um, and I have a splash page up right now, um, but there's going to be more coming soon. All right. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. I had pleasure. It's it's pleasure. great to hear your anecdotes. And, um, and I think it'll be really helpful for everybody else in the business. I hope so. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Bye.